Do you want to get into PC gaming but don't know where to start? Have you ever looked at a spec sheet and pretended to know the difference between your GPU and your CPU, your RTX and your GTX, your SSD and your HDD? And when someone asks you how much RAM do you need, do you reply with yes? If any of these things has happened to you or you're just looking for a new PC gaming device and don't know where to start and feel like it's too late in the game to ask for help, then never fear, I'm going to be going through the product page of Predator's beloved Helios 300, which is exactly the bad boy I have right here to break down, translate, and generally debunk what it all means. We're learning things today. So I have here loaded up the Predator Helios 300 webpage. This is the general product page that tells you all the information you need to know about the Helios 300. And actually, there's, there's a lot of info here. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do in order to get through this in a fast and informative way, I'll probably just highlight the key points, probably over explain them, and also use my hands a lot so you don't fall asleep. So <laughs> let's get started. Starting off with 240 hertz. This here is your refresh rate. So your display shows motion by showing a quick succession of still images and your refresh rate tells you how many images your screen can display per second. So a high refresh rate enables a smoother gameplay with less input lag. And I'm sure you also may know that having a higher frames per second is generally what you want in a game. However, your refresh rate does not determine your game's frame rate. Let's just draw that in there right now. Your GPU determines your game's frame rate and your monitor displays them. So displaying on a 240 hertz screen means essentially your screen is capped at 240 frames per second, which is a very fine limit, if you could call it that. That is a very high refresh rate. Do you actually need it? Well, if you're using a 240 hertz screen for things that don't require a high frame rate, like general productivity, watching videos on YouTube that are usually shot in 60 frames per second or less, or for games that don't output a high frame rate, games like Minecraft, then having a 240 hertz monitor uh, would be a bit of a waste. However, if you like to play shooters, racing games, or anything fast paced where there's a lot going on, your GPU will output more frames per second. So having a monitor that can actually display them is super beneficial. A display that's 144 hertz and up would be best to give you a more fluid and sharper gameplay. Now, the Helios 300, which I have here, is the 144 hertz version, and the Helios 300 avatars is 240 hertz. I think most of them are 240 hertz now, which is really great to see. 240 hertz, who's it actually for? This is best for esports, competitive gamers, anyone who's looking to get into competitive gaming, or anyone who appreciates the true lifelike motion quality. Um, the difference between 144 and 240 isn't, it's not the biggest difference, but it is subtle and it can give you the extra edge. Three milliseconds is your response time, and this is the length of time the display needs to change the properties of a pixel. So the term that's usually used here is G to G, which means gray to gray. And there's a time it takes for the pixel to turn from one shade of gray to a slightly different shade of gray. And this is the standard that's used here. So the smaller the number, the faster it is, and the smoother the image is. It's worth noting here that the three millisecond is an overdrive response time. In overdrive, the pixels have an increased voltage to give a faster value. But this is something you can easily enable in the prior to sense program. And generally for gaming, a response time of five milliseconds or less is preferred. And if this was all too long, didn't listen, then low response times, high refresh rates are good. <laughs> Okay, so, oh, nearly missed it, IPS panel. I actually think we have a video talking about this a little bit more. But in short, you have three different types of panel. VA, vertical alignment, TN, twisted pneumatic, and IPS, in-plane switching. This one right here is an IPS panel. So, what are the three panels? VA, vertical alignment, that's generally known for the best color contrast and best color reproduction, but with poor gaming capabilities. TN is known for high gaming capabilities, your high refresh rates, your low response times, which we just talked about, um, but pretty poor visuals. And your IPS is kind of the mid-ground in between these two, with good gaming capabilities and good color reproduction, and the best viewing angles of all three. Just, just look at all those viewing angles, damn. And usually this IPS is where you compromise in between the two. However, now you have an IPS panel with high refresh rates and low response time, so you have the same like great capabilities as you do in the TN, but with IPS colors. So that's a win. Now we can get, oh, we can get into the specs. Finally, the actual, the, the proper specs, the belly of the beast, the organs of the <laughs> Helios 300. The Helios has some variations, but it's top line processor. We'll start off with the processors. Top line processor is an i7-10750H. What does that all mean? Well, let's dive into the Intel nomenclature because I know you're just, you're just dying to hear about it. So let's start off with the i7. The i number is generally how powerful the processor is. This starts off at i3. That's what you'll find in your low cost PCs, everyday PCs used for, and you probably do some casual gaming on there too going all the way up to an i9, and that's what you'll find in your top tier builds that can handle any CPU intensive task, 
content creation, all the gaming too. Your i5s and your i7s sit in the middle and that's kind of a sweet spot with the i5s being great value for money and the i7s just being able to do more. Now the next part, 10750H. So the first two numbers here indicate the generation. This is Intel's 10th generation of processors, which is the newest at the moment in laptops until we start seeing the 11th gen, which is, is coming pretty soon. So the higher the number, the newer the generation. And with new generations comes new developments in the processor's architecture to give a better efficiency, increased clock speeds, more cores, things like that. So the next three numbers are an indication to the processing power. And generally, the higher the number, the better. So here we have 750. And in this, in this range, uh, it goes from like 500 to 800 and something. So 750 is a good indication that it is powerful. Now, the next part, the H that sneaky little letter that you'll see sometimes at the end of Intel processors, but also sometimes not. They're, different letters mean different things. I'm not gonna go through them all. The H here means high performance graphics. So this is something you generally find in capable gaming laptops, as is a mobile processor. Now let's move on to graphics. I'm still on the same page. Oh my God, I'm gonna be here for a while. So the top line specs for the Helios 300 are NVIDIA's GeForce RTX 2070 graphics card. We have NVIDIA, our company, we have GeForce, their brand of GPUs, and we have the RTX being the model. Let's dive into that. So generally with NVIDIA's video cards and gaming devices that you would have seen, they start with GTX or RTX. You can think of GTX as like their, their regular standard line of graphics cards, with the RTX cards having dedicated hardware included for real-time ray tracing capabilities and a type of anti-aliasing that's named deep learning super sampling. So what does that all mean? So ray tracing gives us lifelike shadows, reflections and lighting for the supported games. And this is really great for cinematic games because it just looks, it just looks amazing. Uh, I've tried in Battlefield 5, they have ray trace reflections, they look great. Uh, shadow of a Tomb Raider, they have ray trace shadows, which look really beautiful. Sounds like a weird way to describe a shadow, but here we are. The downside of ray tracing abilities, however, is the drop in frames per second to your game. And that's where the performance boosting, deep learning super sampling or DLSS 2.0 comes in, as it gives you an increase in frames per second. Actually, while you have ray tracing on, if you put on the DLSS, your frames per second can increase by double, sometimes more than double, which is great. And another benefit of the DLSS is that it sharpens up images that would sometimes be in the background and appear blurry, it sharpens everything up and it looks really nice. Now, not every game supports ray tracing and not every game supports DLSS. The, it's not always needed, but there are more games coming out with ray tracing, which is great to see. And a lot of the games that have ray tracing and you really experience that drop in frames per second, that's where the DLSS comes in. So it's good to see where they're, where they're paired, where you might need them. Okay, so what else do we have here? RAM and SSD. Generally, in general, the more the better. So RAM is your random access memory, which is a temporary storage. Everything your computer needs to do right now and do it quickly, it stores in RAM. So it keeps everything running nice and speedy. And the more RAM lets you do more things at once, which is great. A good minimum amount of RAM, I'd say is eight gigabytes. Even just for your general day-to-day -day productivity work and browsing, because Chrome takes up a good chunk of that, having lots of like tabs open in Chrome. Um, but in terms of gaming, different games have different amounts of RAM that they need. Some eight, some lower than that, and then some of the more demanding games, Flight Simulator, I'm looking at you, ask for 16 gigabytes of RAM. Admittedly, a lot of 16 gigabyte RAM kind of games, you can actually play on an eight gigabyte device and it should be fine. However, Flight Simulator, I'm looking at you again because the last time I played it was on a device with 32 gigabytes of RAM. And admittedly, I was playing in ultra settings, but that comfortably used 19, 20 gigabytes of RAM the whole time. So yeah, 16 gigabytes is kind of a sweet spot in between you getting all your, getting your things done, but for not too big a price, because the more RAM, the, the higher the price tag. So all of the Helios 300s come with 16 gigabytes of RAM with upgradability to 32 gigabytes of RAM. 32 gigabytes, that's when you're kind of doing your high resolution video editing and you want to multitask alongside that as well. And it is super easy to upgrade and storage. So the 2020 Helios 300 offers one terabyte of SSD storage in all of its devices with easy upgradability. So why an SSD or a solid state drive instead of a traditional hard drive disk? Having games installed on your SSD means faster boot times, which is great for if you're usually waiting in between loading screens or you play open world games. And the same goes for your operating system. Having it on your SSD as opposed to your hard drive disk means faster boot times for everything. It's gonna be super speedy. So that's definitely one you wanna keep installed on an SSD. 
Inside the Helios, we have three storage slots. We have two M.2 slots, one of which is free to add extra SSD storage, and one of which, which is loaded by my SSD, which is one terabyte. So that gives us a total upgrade ability to two terabytes of SSD storage. And we also have a traditional 2.5 inch bay to add in some much cheaper hard drive storage if you need it. Okay, so what else do we have here? Oh man, there's, there's a lot. I'm gonna try and make it fast because I feel this video turned out a little dense. So let's let's go with overclocking. Overclocking is where you increase your GPU or your CPU's clock speed past the manufacturer recommendations to give you a boost in performance. Now, this Helios 300 here comes in an overclockable GPU. And this is good because most games are GPU dependent, so overclocking this will give you a boost in your frames per second. It's worth noting that some predator devices also come with an overclockable CPU, which is more useful for CPU intensive tasks. Any CPU dependent games, your video editing, your 3D rendering, that kind of thing. Now, the question that I was asked earlier today, why isn't it overclocked all the time? Why is it not working at maximum capacity the whole time? Um, well, it just doesn't need to be. Overclocking gives a boost in performance, but it also draws in more energy and more heat to an already powerful system. I've used it before, I've used it for different games before. For titles like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, it gave me around an extra like five frames per second. And for titles like, I played it, I used it for Apex, and that gave me an extra like 15 frames per second, which is good. So it definitely does something. It definitely gives you a little bit of a boost, but for the most part, you don't need it. You're not gonna rely on it with a device that's as powerful as this one. But it is good to see the overclocking included. However, because before you used to have to do it manually, with other devices, you would have to do it manually, and that voids your warranty alongside other things. So it is good to see it included. I guess that wraps things up as the basics, the well, basics of the Helios 300 here. And I guess of gaming laptops in general, uh, if you thought it was boring, that was a lot more I could have talked about and I stopped myself, <laughs> so there's that. Um, but if you don't know where to start with gaming laptops, uh, then maybe there was, I hope there was something of use in there. That's what I hope, let me know if there was. And obviously if you're looking for a gaming, gaming PC, there's a lot more to consider. And if you're looking at getting like a standalone display, a monitor, there's a lot more to talk about there too. I could really go in depth about that. That's a weird flex. Anyway, let me know what you think down below. Let me know if you want to see any of these other long convoluted videos explaining things. Um, yeah, I uh, hope you had a good day. <laughs> I'll see you next time, bye.